Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this planning application. Today's date is Tuesday, the 3rd of October, and this application is for... Um, sorry, we'll go straight into apologies. Where's this? We've had Lee Wood, uh, Paul Thompson and Jason Jones that I'm aware of. Are there any more? I believe everybody's here, actually. OK. Um, can we go to the minutes of the previous meeting and can I have a mover and a seconder? Uh, those are a true record, please. Rosie Claymore, seconder. Peter Thurgood, thank you. All those in favour that were here? <laughs> um, item four, are there any declarations of interest from members, councillor? Andrew Cooper. Yeah, thank you, Chair. So um, through obviously being nominated to stand as a, a, a parliamentary nominee for the Conservative Party, um, all my literature has gone out um, opposing developments on Greenbelt. It's very clear on there. Um, therefore, uh, I've, uh, it would be wrong for me to jeopardise uh, the decision making process of the Council, which could re uh, result in a costly appeal process should uh, should we vote? Uh, either, should I vote? Sorry, uh, the residents of Tamworth shouldn't have to burden uh, the, uh, that financial cost. So, uh, because of that, I'm going to um, excuse myself from the the debate and the, and the decision making, and uh, and leave the meeting. I'm afraid. Thank you for that, Councillor Cooper. Councillor Thurgood. Um, yeah. Can you use your microphone? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I've, um, I'm actually a member of the fishing syndicate on the River Anchor adjacent to the uh, proposed development, but um, I can quite honestly say that it won't affect which way I vote, because we take the evidence and we, we vote accordingly. Okay, I don't think that's a, that's a, a problem. Any further? So we'll move straight on to um, item five, which is the application in front of us this evening, um, 00070 of 2023. And this is the um, application for a temporary erection of 30 megawatt solar farm with infrastructure, security fence uh, and landscaping with access off laundry lane. And I'll hand you straight over to the officer, uh, which is Andrew Davis. Thank you.
are uh, up to two and a half metres in height at their highest points. Thank you. Um, and um, a dip down at their lowest um, point to uh, 0.6 metres. They would all be um, orientated so that they're facing south um, and um, would be separated by approximately four metres between each um, set of panels. Um, the idea being that the land upon which they sit, although it wouldn't be um, uh, feasible to um, uh, undertake uh, arable farming there, um, the, uh, the land would be available for sheep farming. And so you've got the um, solar panels set at that height, partly for technical reasons, partly because they allow other uses of the agricultural uses of the land to continue. Um, this slide just gives you an indication of the um, uh, security fencing um, and the um, CCTV arrangements, uh, which would be um, uh, found all the way around the areas that uh, would actually be uh, occupied by the, uh, the solar panels. Other infrastructure that you'll find on the site would be substations, um, uh, grid connection cabin, small transformer units, store facilities, all of which um, would be uh, relatively modest um, uh, structures, obviously all like the, so the rest of the solar farm itself, um, features that can be removed at the, uh, the end of the, the lifespan of the uh, uh, development, um, and all relatively minor in scale, so um, nothing um, exceeding uh, four metres in height um, and, and all generally of a height that means that they would be uh, obscured um, in, to most parts by the um, uh, surrounding um, hedgerows. In assessing the, um, the application, there are a number of um, key planning topics that we've had to take into account. Um, as you can see from the, um, the slide here, uh, they're the principal, uh, character and appearance, um, and then more technical issues looking at landscape, biodiversity, heritage, highway safety, amenity, flood risk. And I've um, put in there as well a uh, connection to the national grid, which um, I'll come to at the end of the, uh, the presentation um, and just talk through the implications of that. In terms of the principle, uh, policy SU3 of the Tamworth Local Plan um, supports opportunities for renewable and uh, low carbon energy generation. Tamworth Borough Council, um, as you all know, uh, in November 29, he declared a climate change emergency. The National Planning Policy Framework, uh, government policy states that the planning system should support the transition to a low carbon future. So there is um, national policy um, support for developments of this sort. Um, that low carbon energy schemes um, and associated uh, infrastructure are therefore um, schemes that are supported um, across uh, the range of uh, policy uh, levels. In terms of character and appearance, the site is currently, as I mentioned before, um, open agricultural land. Um, the site is, is uh, relatively flat, um, bounded and crossed by hedgerows, um, many stands of trees um, on and around the site. Um, it sits just to the north of um, the River Anchor and Alfcott Pools to the um, uh, south and southeast of it. Um, to the north of the site and northwest of it, um, the ground rises um, and uh, you've got higher ground in, in those areas. Uh, the uh, proposed uh, development would, of course, be uh, very different to that landscape. Um, it, it would introduce what has been termed by um, Historic England in their assessment of the site as an industrial landscape. However, the, um, uh, the infrastructure that would be provided, the panels, the various um, cabins that I've already mentioned, as noted before, would all be of such a height 
that they would, uh, to a very great extent, be screened by the, uh, the vegetation um, that is there at present. So whilst the actual features themselves are very different to what's in the landscape there today, in terms of the, uh, the views uh, of the site from around it, um, and indeed from within it in many, many parts, um, they, uh, they would not significantly alter um, what would be seen today. Looking at um, landscape in, in a little more detail, um, the applicants provided a landscape uh, and visual impact assessment uh, in accordance with um, our policy EN1. That has been assessed on behalf of the council by Staffordshire County Council's landscape officer. Um, and the overall view from the um, uh, landscape uh, uh, specialist at Staffordshire County Council is that uh, the proposals that have been put forward uh, with additional uh, bolstering of hedgerows um, and uh, with maintenance of the, um, the existing hedgerows and trees on the site um, is such that um, particularly taking into account the temporary nature of it that the, um, uh, the proposal is acceptable in landscape terms. This image um, that you've got there, um, the, uh, the panels are indicated, um, solar panels in the, uh, the horizontal um, lines going across the site, um, but it also gives you an, an, a, an idea of the, um, the extent of hedgerows, um, the extent of tree, existing tree cover around the site, um, and that the, um, the proposed solar farm whilst it covers a large area, would to a large extent be broken up by those features um, and um, on uh, most of its sides uh, fully enclosed by hedgerows and um, trees as well. Looking at the biodiversity aspects of the uh, proposal, they have been considered uh, by Natural England, the statutory um, consultee on such matters, uh, and Staffordshire County Council's ecologist. Um, two uh, key sites of interest from a biodiversity perspective um, were flagged up by the applicants and also by um, early consultees. Particular attention was drawn to Alvecott pools. Um, in the first round of consultation, uh, we, uh, we consulted North Warwickshire Borough Council as the, um, the site lies very close to the boundary of Tamworth with North Warwickshire. Um, North Warwickshire Borough Council raised concerns about potential impacts on Alfcott pools um, and on bird life um, at those pools. Um, after that initial consultation, uh, work was undertaken with the applicant to, um, to make some slight modifications to the scheme um, and to uh, reduce, uh, or sorry, increase the distance between Alvecott pools and the uh, closest of the uh, proposed solar panels. Based upon those um, revised plans, uh, Natural England uh, responded in the second round of consultation um, to say that um, the development would not damage uh, or destroy the interest features for which the site has been notified, principally Alvecott pools and what's known as the decoy local wildlife site. Um, and that as a consequence, Natural England had no objections to the proposal, having considered it um, with respect to ecology and biodiversity. Um, Staffordshire County Council's ecologist has recommended pre-commencement conditions be imposed um, requiring a, a construction environment management plan and an ecology and landscape mitigation and management plan to ensure that um, all appropriate steps are taken during construction and then subsequently during operation um, and finally on removal of the, uh, the proposed development. Moving on to heritage, um, you'll see from uh, the, the image in front of you here the, um, the red line indicating the um, proposed site boundary um, and the green area, the Ammington Hall conservation area. Um, 
Amington Hall itself uh, is located um, at its closest point, some 600 metres away from the, um, uh, the boundary of the site. Um, Amington Hall Farm um, is located closer, um, just over some 300 metres away. Um, but in both cases, the, um, uh, the, the heritage features are uh, very uh, comprehensively screened from the site um, by existing trees and other vegetation. Um, and as noted by um, our conservation officer, uh, there is no intervisibility between the proposed site and the two key heritage assets. Um, he went on to note that the application site within the conservation area does make a moderate positive contribution to the significance of the conservation area. However, it's important to note that that, um, that part of the proposed site is, is currently open fields in the same way in which the rest of the site is. Um, and it has no truly historic features in it um, of note itself, but is there as a, um, as a surrounding area to the, um, uh, the, the Amington Hall to, um, uh, to maintain the, um, the, the appearance of the wider area around the hall. Historic England and the, um, uh, the Council's Conservation Officer both noted that there would be impacts upon the conservation area. Um, and based upon um, that, those notes from uh, the two consultees, um, the applicant, as they'd done um, elsewhere, agreed to further bolster the, um, the existing hedgerows um, on the side of the, uh, the site facing the conservation area. Um, the physical presence of a solar farm uh, within the conservation area then is, is, is taken as granted that it, it has from a, a pure conservation uh, aspect an element of harm to it. Um, however, both Historic England and uh, the Council's Conservation Officer uh, were of the view that um, that in itself was not uh, an adequate degree of harm or a significant enough degree of harm to warrant refusal of the application. And instead, both advised that um, the low level of heritage harm means that um, we have to uh, take a planning balance decision as to whether the other um, aspects of the scheme in terms of public benefits outweigh any minor negative um, ben uh, disbenefits that arise from the uh, uh, the location partly within the conservation area. Highway safety was considered by Staffordshire County Council Highways. Um, they raised no objections to the proposal, have sought um, conditions um, largely relating to the um, maintenance of public rights of way across the site, but the, um, the, the access to the site um, during construction and also um, during the proposed operation of the site um, has, during the, the development of the, the application, um, now been confirmed as routing entirely um, from the um, entrance and exit point of the site in its um, southeastern corner, um, routing into um, North Warwickshire um, with all traffic routing um, initially to the east of um, the village of Shuttington and then routing northwest from there um, to pick up um, the Ashby Road and leading to um, the M42 at Junction 11. So none of the proposed development related traffic or the relatively modest operational traffic associated with the proposal um, is intended to actually enter and exit the site um, through um, through the borough, other than right on its boundary with um, uh, with North Warwickshire. In terms of amenity, the um, the nearest neighbours um, are in um, the two heritage assets that we talked about previously, 
um, Amington uh, Hall Farm and uh, Amington Hall. They are set at um, quite some distance away from the, um, the site. As mentioned previously, none uh, have uh, direct views of the, um, the site because of the existing vegetation. Um, construction impacts would be limited by condition. Uh, as, as mentioned previously, there would be a construction environmental uh, management plan um, and other conditions which would um, limit the, uh, the amenity impacts um, that might arise from construction. Um, and it's considered that within its operational phase, um, amenity impacts from uh, a development of this sort would be very modest um, with relatively little um, access um, by the operator's personnel onto the site, um, next to no noise being generated by um, any of the equipment on the site. Um, and so in general terms, um, it's not considered that there would be any significant um, amenity impacts. As noted before, the, um, the site is um, just to the north of the River Anchor, um, the proposed site lies within what the Environment Agency refer to as Flood Zone 3. Um, this means that there is a high risk and probability of flooding. However, um, as stated in the presentation there, the Environment Agency has not objected. The Environment Agency considers um, solar farms to be a form of development that are acceptable in such locations. Um, even in the section um, of the site, uh, which falls within what is referred by them uh, to as functional floodplain, um, the, uh, the Environment Agency have no concerns um, about solar panels um, being in that area. Um, it should be noted that other aspects of the infrastructure, uh, the various transformer units, various cabins, they, um, following um, detailed investigation by the applicants um, and initial responses from the lead local flood authority and the environment agency. Um, all those elements of infrastructure have been moved to areas that um, would not be inundated or raised to such a level um, that um, they wouldn't be affected by uh, any of the, uh, uh, the flooding modelled by uh, the environment agency. Um, and um, it's been noted that the, the applicant has provided technical assurances that um, were solar panels to find themselves um, surrounded by water, um, that um, they would still be able to operate safely. Um, and uh, we're satisfied that um, that has been uh, addressed. Um, and finally, uh, Staffordshire County Council as lead local flood authority um, have also uh, been involved in assessing the um, proposals um, and they have no objections to the scheme subject to uh, conditions being applied. Finally, um, the proposal um, has, in order to be able to um, get the um, power generated uh, to um, uh, potential consumers, has to be uh, linked up to the national grid. A connection is required, therefore, um, between the site um, and um, the, the national grid. It's proposed um, at the moment that that connection would be to the Tamworth substation, um, just west of the railway line, um, to the um, east of the, uh, uh, the, the Travel Lodge Hotel. Um, it's important to note that uh, whilst there will be um, some works involved um, almost certainly on roads and, and other parts of the borough. Um, all those works would be undertaken not by the developer of the site, uh, but by um, what's known as the district network operator, um, which uh, would be done um, using permitted development rights that they, they would have as a, a statutory undertaker. So um, the, the point I'm trying to make there is that um, there, there will be uh, some works off-site that people will notice. Um, we don't know the details of those yet, um, but even so, those works, because they would be done under permitted development rights, 
are not a material consideration for this application. It's merely for your information that um, uh, I've, I've raised that point. <coughs> so, in conclusions, um, we've used the word temporary uh, in the description, um, talked about it being um, set up and then the site cleared. The proposal is um, seeking permission for the um, uh, proposed solar farm to be in situ um, for a total of 42 years, which would involve one year to, to set it up, um, 40 years of operation, um, and one year in which the, um, uh, the operators would remove it um, afterwards um, and um, make good uh, the, um, the site again so that it would be, um, be left in at least as good a condition um, as it is today. Um, the location is such that with the screening and with the uh, flat uh, topography of the site, um, it is considered that um, not only would the, um, the solar farm not be seen to dominate the landscape in the locality, um, but it would be relatively well hidden um, from uh, all, um, uh, all directions. Consultees have determined that with conditions it is acceptable in respect to flood risk, uh, ecology, landscape and highway terms. Um, the presence uh, within of part of the proposal within the Amington Hall Conservation Area um, would have some minor degree of harm to the, uh, the conservation area in technical terms. But on balance, it is considered that the, uh, the climate change adaptation benefits of the proposal uh, with the production of renewable energy um, outweigh the, the potential heritage harms that arise from it. Um, and consequently, uh, the application is recommended to committee uh, for approval with conditions. Thank you very much for that, Andrew. It's, uh, it's nice to see a report that we can... Uh digest, uh, understand, and it's very simple. And thank you for the presentation as well. Um, it's really uh, easy presentation to do. Um, are there any questions of um, Andrew, uh, Councillor Thurgood? Thank you, Chair. The hedgerow between um, Amington Hall, Amington Farm, and the area, is it possible to put a TPO on a hedge or protect that hedge so that um, it can not be removed um, during the, the tenure of the um, solar panels. Thanks. Um, I'd have to take advice on the TPO side of, of that. However, um, what I would say, uh, Councillor Thurgood, is that uh, the, the proposal is based upon plans that retain those hedgerows. Um, and any removal of those hedgerows um, would constitute a breach of the, um, uh, the permission. So by virtue of how it has been presented, um, the uh, approval of the plans would actually protect those hedgerows. Um, yeah, if I could continue, Chair. Um, at the moment, is it right to say that that is a greenfield site? Okay. And when the um, term has finished, it will be returned and classified as greenfield. So we're not actually losing any greenfield site. And also the depth of the, um, the, the posts retaining those solar panels is only going down a very short distance. So in terms of conservation, um, there will be very little damage, if any, to any possible historic sites there. Um, yes, that's correct. Um, the, the infrastructure that is intended to be um, put in place it is designed to have minimal impact upon the, um, uh, the, the land upon which it's sited. Um, and the, the heritage aspect of it is such that um, it's not anticipated that there would be any damage to heritage assets arising from installation of the, um, the solar panels. Um, but it's also been assessed by Natural England in terms of soil quality. 
um, and uh, what would be left of the, um, uh, the, the soil structures um, within the, the site. And the advice that they have given in their um, consultation response is that they believe that um, the nature of the proposal is such that with careful removal at the end of the, um, the term of operation, that there would be no damage to the, um, uh, the, the soils of those fields as they are today. Yeah, and if, if I could just clarify further, so uh, there's a condition uh, on page 31, so condition 20, although I've just noted there is a slight numbering issue, so it might be condition 19 once we've reconfigured it, it does talk about decommissioning of the site um, and that a plan would need to be submitted to the local planning authority, the purpose of which is to safeguard the long-term biodiversity of the area, the soil structure of the site and landscape in accordance with our policy. So hopefully that captures it nicely in, in the application. Thank you. Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I think my question has just been answered, to be honest. I was going to you know, just state if you go about 400 metres further up the Ashby Road from where this is proposed, there's an ancient Saxon mott. The mott is actually the exact same size as the mott on our castle. Not many people know it's there, but it is there. That site is of some incredible historic significance. I just wondered, was there any plans for any quick archaeological digs before we do any of this? But I think the question has technically been answered, so I don't think it does need answering. Again, just looking at the conditions, it's condition five, although I think it might be condition four when we've renumbered it. Um, I need to take my glasses off. Um, so, yeah, prior to commencement, again, um, written scheme of archaeological investigation, but that relates to the site, um, just to make sure that where the development is proposed, there's nothing significant underneath sort of substructure um, underground that would, that, that would cause any issues of significance. So there is quite a big... Uh, condition that sets out what we would expect to see, um, advised of course by the County Council in terms of archaeological support. Any further questions for Andrew? Councillor Maycock? Yeah, there's a, quite a few um, public right of ways crisscrossing the site. Are they, are they all, all staying as, as is? Yeah, the, um, the applicants have undertaken to ensure that the public rights of way are all maintained um, as being available for use at all times. And indeed, Staffordshire County Council's public rights of way team um, have uh, required um, conditions be imposed to that effect as well. So, so essentially, <laughs> that it, it's going to be like sections of solar panels that are going to be on one big site. So, so they're going to have the fence around each individual individual section aren't they yes to to a, to a large extent that is how it how it will be yes i think those of us that went on the site visit and i think it was the hottest day of the year in the uk or it felt but it didn't feel like it coming back from egypt recently but yeah it was hot um we could see the actual expanse of the site um and it was good to have councillor thurgood peter there because he understood the the flood issue and explained about the the some of the solar panels being underwater um, so it's great to have somebody with a little bit of technical expertise as well and um, to help those that don't um, so yeah I think it was it was a great to do that site visit before tonight so are there any further questions for Andrew before I invite um, the applicant Dan? I, I know you mentioned about the uh, the cabling and the panels being okay uh, for flooding but you mentioned sheep. Now, animals can chew through PV cable, so uh, I'm, I'm guessing that they've... Uh... I will attempt to answer that. Um, I believe that um, grazing of sheep on um, such sites is absolutely commonplace. Um, this will definitely, <coughs> excuse me, definitely not be the first site um, to uh, to have sheep grazing, um, so uh, having not been aware of any problems elsewhere, um, I, I wouldn't say that it could never happen, but I think it's highly unlikely, and certainly um, it is very much standard practice. 
Yeah, I, I was just going to reinforce, um, if I could, I've dealt with a number of solar farms in a different authority, not here. And um, yes, sheep have definitely been on site as the agricultural kind of element of it, because they can graze in between quite safely. And I'm not aware of any issues. Um, no so. <laughs> not that I'm aware of, um, unless you want to ask, or maybe the applicant wants to pick that up in their presentation. Um, Okay, Peter, did you want to ask a question before I invite? I'd like to, like to say, first, I've been a member of that club, or that syndicate, since 1976, and the only flooding I've ever noted was really the Warwickshire Moor, not the other side. Um, but the, other, the, the main uh, question I was going to ask was, the bridge from um, Pretty Pigs over towards Seckington, it's quite a fragile bridge and I'm just wondering if there's any plans to try and keep the site traffic away from there and probably uh, away from Shuttington as well. Yeah, um, as I said earlier, during the development of the scheme, um, the applicants looked again at um, the, the potential routes that they could use mm. and the, um, the route that they have um, settled upon um, and which formed the basis for the reconsultation exercise in late July, uh, does not have traffic passing in front of the Pretty Pigs um, or, or using the roads in that area. Mm -hmm. um, it, it takes traffic um, from Laundry Lane um, to the uh, past the shutting the Shuttington turn and then to the next one, which leads um, up to um, Seckington and, and towards the Ashby Road. Mm. So um, that has been taken into account by the applicants um, with this proposal. Thank you. Quickly done. It's on the um, North Warwickshire side, but obviously going up through Shuttington, it, it, it's hard for cars sometimes to, to pass that hill. Uh, so is there any sort of temporary measure that, that's going to be going on up there? I'm, I'm just thinking about safety. No. Um, the, the, none of the traffic would pass through Shuttington at all. The, the route avoids uh, for, for traffic avoids um, Shuttington. So it, it, stays so, on the, it stays on the main road up to Junction 11 which is the M42, so it's, it's that main road, which is, which is a pretty decent road, actually. Sorry, yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. Okay, can I invite um, Jill Eaton to come from, who is the um, agent for Revolution Projects? Are you okay with the microphone, Jill, yeah? Yeah, that's great, thanks very much. Can you hear me okay? Um, good evening, I'm Jill Eaton, Charter Town Planner and representing the applicant Tamworth Solar Limited. We're all aware of the severity of the climate emergency. Solar projects such as this are a vital part of helping to address the climate change. Solar produces no pollution, it represents a homegrown UK energy source at a time when global costs of energy crisis is affecting households and businesses throughout the country. Solar energy is now one of the cheapest sources of power. Our solar farm will make a crucial contribution to the Council's journey towards net zero while generating clean renewable energy to power the equivalent of 11,500 homes per year. It will help mitigate the climate emergency declared by Tamworth Borough Council in 2019. We've worked extensively with officers since, since submission of the application in February this year and are pleased to receive the officer's recommendation for approval. The site is not located in the green belt and we've worked particularly closely on matters relating to ecology, flood and heritage and the scheme addresses all of the material planning considerations and complies with the relevant planning policies and requirements. We've engaged really closely with the statutory consultees and engaged early with the local community. We've made amendments to address the comments received and we've changed the scheme to include the additional hedgerow planting to address flood considerations and to respond to the ecological matters. 
biodiversity net gain will be around 40%. And this is through new wildflower planting, hedgerow planting and new biodiversity areas. The access routing has been agreed with Shuttington Parish Council and no construction traffic will be routed through the main built-up areas of Tamworth. The scheme amendments have addressed all outstanding points and no objections are maintained from statutory consultees. We're pleased to have received technical support for all the material planning considerations and we therefore respectfully request that members resolve to grant permission in line with your officer's recommendation so that this important scheme can come forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jill, if you want to just stay there while... Um, it, do you want to just pick up the point about the um, some of the panels that might be underwater if it does flood? And uh, and Councillor Maycock's uh, concern about fried sheep. That's fine. Um, we've got a technical team here with the developer, the operator, and my colleagues from Third Revolution. So are there any further comments we want to add? We've obviously worked closely with our flood consultants. We've produced the um, flood risk impact assessment. We've confirmed additionally that the um, safe operation of the panels and it complies with the relevant policies of the MPPF on flooding and with the local policies. If anyone's got anything to add, please do. See this prediction of the cable then. <coughs> Simply put, uh, uh, cables have additional protection and uh, the panels uh, uh, also uh, have protection against uh, uh, any water or uh, the sheep, they cannot get to the cable. Um, I'll just add on the flooding note as well that we have worked um, with the LLFA to ensure that the, flood, the solar panels are raised at least 0 0.8 metres, so there's no sort of bodges of panels touching the water. And we've also um, checked with the technical team, uh, and which confirms that it's not going to have any risk um, if, uh, if, uh, due to flooding on the solar panels. Members, have you got any questions for um, from Jill Eaton? Anybody got any? Danny's going to have a technical question, I can see. Uh, it's a technical question for our legal officer. Um, given this is obviously a speech in support of the application, our local development scheme actually, and our statement of community involvement gives them three minutes to do a presentation. If we'd had objections tonight, you would have had to give them that same, that same time and ask the committee if they had to ask the objectors questions, at which point we're in breach of our own policies. We shouldn't be doing this. So uh, I timed the speech. Uh, it began at 6.39 and finished at 6.42. Um, and there were questions that were following. Um, so there has been no second speech. There's just been questions. But my point remains, if we'd had objectors here, and I don't think we have, I assume we haven't, if we'd had objectors here, would they have been given the exact same opportunity? We're obviously, the proposer is now going, no, we wouldn't have done what we're there for. There's a lack of fairness under our scheme of community involvement. We, we, we shouldn't be doing this. I believe it's at the Chair's discretion, Councillor Cook, and this was discussed before tonight's meeting, and everything was agreed that this was okay. I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't. Okay. Any, any questions for members? Gareth. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, how much uh, percentage, um, once the site's gone, uh, the solar panels can be recycled? Because um, obviously with some stuff now, it's actually been put in landfill. So because of a solar panel, what is the percentage of being recycled? Thank you. It's a question I need to pass across to the applicants <laughs> as opposed to the agents. The applicants speaking in a minute. So I don't know if you want to direct the question okay. then. Thank you. Is it Sarah Shah? Do you want to come forward now and then you might ask to cover the questions that might be asked? Do your speech first and then we'll cover any questions. Sounds okay. Can everyone hear me okay? Brilliant. Good evening, I'm Swara Shah, Planning Manager at RE Projects Development. I'm here today to express my support for the proposed solar farm. Tamworth Solar Limited is a partnership between RE Projects Development and Uniper Renewables under the Uniper Group. It marks a significant step towards a cleaner, more sustainable future for the community. 
In collaboration with Uniper, we aim to deliver over 500 megawatts of solar projects across the UK as outlined in a conditional contract. The project will be managed by Uniper, who will take on the responsibilities of oversee overseeing its development, construction and operation. The involvement extends across the project's entire life cycle, reflecting the dedication to collaborating with the community and furnishing eco-friendly, sustainable energy solutions. Our commitment doesn't end with energy production, it extends to responsible practices. As per our agreement with the landowner, decommissioning the solar panels after the 40 years is not just a commitment, but also a legal obligation. We will recycle the panels responsibly and restore the land to its natural state, showcasing our dedication to ethical land use and environmental sustainability. Beyond being an energy project, the Tamworth Solar Farm will also create local employment opportunities and drive economic growth. We have also been in contact and working with Shuttington and Albuquerque Parish to offer community benefits um, for the lifetime of the project, which can be used by the community. The project embodies our vision for a cleaner, greener tomorrow. And by approving this project, we invest in clean, renewable energy that will power our homes, schools and businesses. We're reducing our reliance on fossil fuels, cutting harmful emissions and fighting climate change. I urge you to support the approval of the Tamworth Solar Farm. Let's unite in a decision that we and our future generations can proudly stand by. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Are there any questions now? So do you want to address um, Councillor Coates' question first about the, sure. um, how we recycle them? Sure. So uh, approximately 90% of the solar panels to be re recycled. So solar panels include semiconductor materials and has a glass panel um, and it's uh, based on a metal structure. Uh, with the newer recycling technologies, 90% of this, uh, the glass will be recycled. The semiconductors can be used in other solar panel manufacturer and the metal structures that it's positioned on will also be recycled or reused for future solar panel use as well. So 90% of it, I can assure you, is recycled. Uh, Glenn? Thank you, Chair. I'm just interested, um, say you get permission tonight, can I ask when you estimate it starting on site, please? When do you estimate starting on site? <clears throat> So um, obviously, what it, uh, once a decision has been issued, there is quite a few process. So this includes procurement of solar panels, um, discharging of conditions, and also aligning that with the grid route that um, Case Officer Andrew has aligned. So all of this will work in parallel. And once we have this, um, this sort of lined up, we will start construction um, for the site as well. Any further questions? It's just for the um, for the applicant, yes, Tom. So, um, will you be waiting for the grid infrastructure to be there before you guys start construction? Yes, we're waiting on the grid timescales at the moment, um, only because um, one of the conditions that counts, um, Case Officer Andrews provided is we have one year, very limited time for construction. At the moment, construction of the site some, takes somewhere between um, three to six months. So we have to line that up um, because we are, uh, we're not sure about the timescales from the grid route at the moment. So if the grid takes longer than 12 months, you, you're not going to be able to start really and you're going to have to bring a new application forward, aren't you? So I'm unable to confirm because it's a separate application, which will be done by National Grid. Um, but um, I'm sure if you... Cut. Andrew, do you want to come in? Yeah, thank you. Um, with respect to your, your question, um, there's three years for the um, approval to be implemented if it's approved. Um, so potentially work on site could, might not start until towards the end of that three-year period. It would then have one year for construction, uh, the 40 years of operation, one year removal. If after three years the, the um, grid connection still was not sufficiently uh, developed for work to start, then a new application uh, of some description would be required. Any further questions? No? Okay, so we've got um, a recommendation this evening to grant the planning permission 
subject to the conditions that are set out uh, as, as in the report um, with delegated authority to the AD for growth and regeneration to approve any amendments to those conditions as deemed necessary. Um, I'm happy to propose that. Can I look for a second, uh, Councillor Cook? Thank you very much. Happy to second, yeah. We, we should absolutely be doing this, as rightly said earlier. We declared a climate change in emergency in 2019. If this planning committee passed this, this might be the biggest stride this council has actually taken against yeah. that agenda. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, an opportunity not to be missed, I think the phrase is. Um, and I think they look quite pretty as well. So. <laughs> um, right, so we've got a proposer and a seconder. All those in favour? Well, that's unanimous. So that is passed. Yep. Thank you very um, much. Thank guys. you very much for our guests for attending this evening. I know you're all very busy, and as are we. Um, and thank you to the officers for the very detailed report and the presentation. And uh, thank you all for attending, and safe journey home all. Thank you for having us, um, Chair. Thank you. Thank you.